Hi my friends, my name is Daniel Villarino. Welcome to my YouTube channel. As you can see by these images, today, March 5th of 2015, is a snowy day. I have recorded these few images of the back of my home, uh, where you can see that it has accumulated already uh, several inches on the table and the rails of my deck. Uh, today also is my friend Eric's uh, birthday, so I want to prepare him something. I'm going to see him uh, next uh, Tuesday and I would like to have something to give him. I know that Eric is a guy that likes the outdoors. I don't know if he goes camping too, too often, but I think this is going to be a nice uh, thing to have. At least it's going to be a cool thing to have. This is basically a kit that uh, I have uh, to make a fire starter. And Eric, this is not to start your cigarettes, okay? <laughs> so, uh, if you can see here, this is a rod uh, made of uh, magnesium, and this is the flint. And basically you have this, uh, which is also a metal part, which is a striker, and basically you scrape uh, the flint and generate uh, sparks to ignite uh, dry uh, leaves or, or moss or something like that. Now, when the conditions of the weather are like today, for example, or wet and uh, <clears throat> you have trouble igniting whatever you are trying to, to ignite, uh, to start a fire, what you can do is uh, basically scrape with these uh, few uh, flakes of magnesium and put them on top of the leaves or moss or whatever you are trying to ignite. And then you direct the flints towards the magnesium. The magnesium ignites uh, very high temperatures. I believe it's like uh, 5,400 Fahrenheit. So that will start a fire even with wet materials. And uh, then you have this uh, leather cord uh, to attach uh, the striker to the back of your handle. And uh, it has this little um, compass that you can also put on the back of your handle. So I'm going to make him this uh, uh, fire starter. Uh, for it, I'm going to use uh, this piece of Bocotti. Uh, I need about uh, three inches, which is uh, three and a half inches or four inches, which is between seven and a half and ten centimeters. So I'm going to cut a piece of this, mount it in the lathe, and uh, work on the handle for this uh, fire starter. So let's get to work and happy birthday, Eric! These are the instructions uh, for the fire starter and uh, as you can see there, it comes in two models, one for 6,000 strikes and one for 20,000 strikes. The one I have is for 20,000 strikes, so I, what I did is I scratched all the texts related to the 6,000 strike so I don't get confused with the measures. So, the implements we need are a blank of uh, wood that is going to be at least one inch square. This one is one and a half, so it's more than enough. And it has to be at least three and a half inches long. This one is four inches, because I think the handle will be better to have a little more uh, length than three and a half. What else we need? We need uh, to make a perforation on one side for the compass. And that perforation has to be 15 millimeters or uh, 19 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. So I have uh, that bit for making that perforation. On the other side, 
we need to make a perforation of 5 eighths of an inch for uh, inserting the, the rod. And I have this Forstner bit that is uh, 5 eighths of an inch for that other perforation and that perforation has to be 5 eighths of an inch deep. Now, it recommends uh, for the leather strap uh, to make a hole in the handle of one quarter of an inch. So I have that uh, bit as well. And then uh, the other thing is uh, to hold this uh, securely, there are several methods. And uh, they recommend uh, to use a sport center, like uh, is shown here. But the problem is that that sport center has to fit inside the 15 millimeters hole or 19, uh, 32 seconds of an inch hole that you have for the compass. Um, my sport center has a diameter of uh, almost uh, 25 millimeters or, or an inch, so I won't be able to use that uh, for that. There are several other methods that are shown here in the instructions. Uh, you can use a uh, jam chuck, you can use uh, a small screw chuck, or you can use the bottle stopper chuck. And I have the bottle stopper chuck, so that's the method I am going to use. Since I am going to use the bottle stopper chuck, I'm going to need uh, to make a thread uh, to insert this screw in the piece of wood. And for that, I need to use uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch bead to make the initial hole and then I need a 3 8 of an inch tab to make the thread. So those are two things that I am going to need as well. And then on the one side, on one side we are going to use the chuck to hold the blank. On the other side we are going to use a life center. Uh, so I have this life center to put on the other side and uh, to make all the perforations uh, I'm going to use this uh, blank drilling chuck so I can hold the piece there and uh, make the perforations. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, hold the piece securely in this um, blank drilling uh, chuck, uh, make all the perforations that I need on the faces and then mount it on the bottle stopper chuck with the life center and begin molding the, the shapes. And before doing that, actually while I still have these uh, flat faces, I'm going to make the perforations for the leather strap. This square face here is where I am going to make the hole for the compass as well as for the bottle stopper chuck. And on the same side of the handle is where the hole has to go for the leather strap. So the side has uh, one and a half inches in width. So what I'm going to do is uh, mark a line here at uh, three quarters of an inch and about, uh, I guess, <clears throat> an inch and a quarter from the side, from the square face. That's where I'm going to make the quarter inch hole going all the way through the block. I'm going to place the quarter inch bit in my drill. Uh, ideally, this will be better to do it in a drill press, but it's not critical as long as it goes as straight as possible. So I'm going to try to do that. So that's the one quarter inch hole going through the side of the, of the blank all the way. I made a note in the leather strap and uh, the size is about it's a 3 eighths of an inch on this part. So if I want this knot to get inside of the wood, uh, I had to make a hole a little bigger than 
the one core. So I'm going to make a hole of uh, three eighths of an inch, uh, going no more than half the way, so that the knot is going to stay inside the handle. So you can see how the knot gets inside. Now that I have made on the side face of the blank the one quarter inch hole going all the way through and the three eighths of an inch hole going about five eighths of an inch deep, I'm going to mount this in the blank drilling uh, chuck so that I can square off this face that is the closest one to the hole and uh, make the perforation for the compass there as well as the perforation and the thread for the bottle stopper chuck. I'm going to use this one inch and a quarter Forstner bit to score off this end of the blank. Now I have to make the hole that we hold the compass and for that I need a bit that is going to be 19 30 seconds of an inch which is the one I have or you can use also a 15 millimeters uh, bit and this hole has to be one quarter of an inch deep so I'm going to mark one quarter of an inch on the bit uh, to make sure that I don't go too deep with that. We want the compass to be pretty much flush with the surface here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to begin to make the hole and when I am close to the distance I'm going to test and keep testing until I get it to the right uh, depth. The compass is still a bit proud uh, with respect to the wood, so I'm going to make the perforation a bit deeper. It has to go one or two millimeters, <clears throat> about one sixteen of an inch, a little more perhaps. Okay, after several tries, I got it uh, to fit pretty well there. Uh, just the convexity of the compass is uh, the part that actually protrudes from the surface of the wood, so I think it's a nice fit there. So now I'm going to make the hole for the bottle stopper chuck. I don't want this hole to go deeper than the distance from the side hole to the face, so and that's about one inch. So I'm going to mark on the bit uh, three quarter inch depth and I will make the perforation up to there. So now I have a way to securely hold this blank when I put the bottle stopper mandrel in 
the jack. Now that I finish this side of the blank, what I'm going to do is uh, turn it around and make the hole for, for the roll. The instructions indicate that to fit this here, I need a 5 eighths of an inch uh, perforation. And it says uh, here that the depth of that perforation has to be 5 eighths of an inch. So uh, I'm going to do that. I made a mark at uh, 5 eighths of an inch right there in the Forstner bit so that I know that when I reach this mark at the surface of, the, of this square face of the blank I'm going to be 5 eighths of an inch deep. Uh, you probably have seen me doing these marks in many of my beats and at some point uh, you may get uh, confused between different marks that you already have. Well, uh, it's very easy to clean this up with uh, alcohol. A bit of preparation but I have the blank now mounted between the bottle stopper chuck and the conic life center very secure so now I can turn the handle before you do anything on the lathe or any other power tool make always sure that you are using adequate protection Sorry, I, I didn't realize that the camera was off when I was turning the codes uh, to place the fingers in, in the handle. So um, I just use a carbide a round bit uh, to, to make the codes and then I smooth the edges with the, the square one. Again, my apologies. Okay, I finished shaping the handle and now I am going to sand it uh, going through the grids from 150, 240, 320, 400 and 600 and perhaps 800 and once I, I finish I'm going to apply uh, a little bit of abrasive um, paste. Uh, is, uh, Tripoli, Ultra Shine, uh, Wax, and uh, finally I'm going to apply uh, Friction Polish. Now, uh, the way that I have this on the lay, I am doing first all the sides, then I, I'm going to remove the life center 
and uh, finish that part and the part that is against the bottle stopper chuck uh, that one I am going to do by hand uh, because um, I don't have a way to support it so with that the only thing that is going to be remaining will be to attach the different components with CA glue in this side and the magnesium bar on that side so it will be complete. When I finished uh, turning I was able to complete this face and the whole length of the handle but not 
the, this part where the compass goes, so I had to do that uh, by hand. Before uh, applying the wax and the finish there, after the, the sanding, what I did is put a piece of paper here to avoid the wax penetrating in that hole. Otherwise, the CA glue will not stick there. So now I'm going to use uh, some CA glue here to put the compass. And now I'm going to put the bar here. see the compass there and uh, if I put it on the side you will see that it's pretty much a uh, flash with this face of the handle here you can just see uh, a little bit of the <coughs> blister of the, of the compass and I have the magnesium bar with the flint on this other side so now I'm going to put the leather strap so I already made a, a nut on this side. I'm going to pass it through this hole so the nut is going to get in there. And I will just pass this through this uh, striker and make a knot on this side as well. So that's it. Okay, I just finished uh, making the fire starter. Uh, you can take a look here. Uh, it has a Bocotti uh, handle. Uh, this is the compass in the butt of the handle. And then uh, you have this rod, the cylindrical rod, which is magnesium and the flint there. And the striker attached to the handle by the leather strap. And the way this works is basically that uh, you direct um, the sparks towards the leaves or the moss that you want to use to start the fire. And then you just um, use the striker to generate the sparks like this. So if for any reason the leaves or the moss or whatever you are using, you know, small shavings of wood are uh, kind of uh, wet and they don't uh, catch fire, what you can do is scrape uh, some flakes of magnesium using the same striker and put them on top of the leaves and then direct the sparks towards uh, the magnesium. The magnesium will burn at uh, 5400 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and that will ignite uh, whatever you, you have there no matter how wet it is. Uh, so Eric, I hope you have fun with this uh, fire starter. I wish you a happy birthday and uh, again don't use it to start your cigarettes. And uh, to all of you, uh, if you enjoyed this video please uh, mark uh, so with the like button below, uh, make comments and if you haven't subscribed to my uh, channel yet, uh, please do so. I am going to put a few pictures of the fire starter at the end and it will be until the next one. Cheers! Okay, I have uh, Eric's uh, fire starter here. What I'm going to do now is, uh, in my fireplace, I have uh, some paper and some kindlings there. Uh, I'm going to try to start the fire with uh, the fire starter. And what I'm going to do is uh, scrape uh, a few flakes of uh, magnesium in the mix over there. Like that. then 
basically strike this the flint with the with a strike. And that's basically all it takes. So that's it. Hi, I have here Eric's uh, uh, gift uh, for his birthday, the fire starter. And what I am going to do is uh, outside, as you can see, uh, it has been snowing. There's almost uh, 12 inches of snow there. I put a piece of paper here and some kindlings, and I already scraped uh, part of the magnesium there. So I'm going to try to start the fire right there. Let's see what happens. And you can see that Eric has started. Now, always safety first. As you can see, I have here a show full of uh, snow. Fire is off. <laughs> okay, Eric. I really hope uh, you have fun with this as much as I had uh, making it. And I wish you happy birthday. Cheers.